Hey, Composing Gloves here. I'm wearing a hat. Today we're going to be looking at ADSR and the frequency spectrum. I expect you to have at least watched the frequency spectrum video and the sound synth basics because I cover what it is if you don't know what it is. And then the other one is the critical listening series. Most of the videos near the beginning and even some later on cover frequency spectrum, Fletcher Munson curves, and why things sound the way they do. Like where certain, why certain parts of the frequency spectrum do what they do. Here we're going to be talking something about when you make moves on the frequency spectrum as we do, we're just going to become more conscious about the effects that are going on so that we can make appropriate responses. So I have something here. I have this a series of risers that all meld together and I take advantage of the spectrum and how we perceive it to create a really dynamic, interesting riser. So I have these risers here, I have these risers here, and I've got this riser here. And I believe one of these, might be this one, is controlling the filter on one of the synths that's going on. It might be this one. I don't know. I think it actually turns it off. But I can't remember. No, this is an effects reverse riser. Anyways, there's a whole bunch of risers being merged together. And what we're going to do is we're going to listen. This, this track is called Planet Z. And here we go. <laughs> So really cool sort of authentic riser, authentic, I don't know where I got that from. But anyways, let's go ahead and mute a couple of things and just listen to that last part of the riser because it does something that's kind of interesting. We're going to turn this off and we're going to turn that off. And okay. We'll listen from over here. And this guy, I think, I, yep, I turned this off. That shouldn't be off. So we're going to deal with that. But anyways, you hear how things just meld together. This this goes, and then it turns down a little bit. And this, there's a couple reasons why this happens. So a lot of times when people make volume moves like this, and this is something I do very commonly, is this has a lot of very bright stuff that I don't necessarily want all the time, especially as fast as it introduces it. I need to custom fit it to fit this track. So I'll constantly be rewriting. I'll either use filters or just general volume moves to change the way the sound fits. Now, something that when we do something like that is we're also altering we're altering the envelope of the sound in this case not very dramatically but you see we've added some decay stages that weren't in the original sound but we've also altered the frequency content quite dramatically we did just turn it down because of the fletcher munson curve so when we do something like this like we started off softer the bright content's actually substantially softer than what it was it doesn't turn down evenly because we're less sensitive to higher frequency content but as it gets louder here it not only gets louder, it gets louder a whole lot faster than the rest of the content does. It's like the spectrum catches up with itself. It's because we're less sensitive, but as we get, uh, as volume increases with sounds like this especially, but as volume increases, our linearity is, I guess, not really restored, but it's our the frequency spectrum is brought to a linear perception. It's not totally linear, but it's a lot more linear. So high frequencies sound much louder when they're louder, but when they're softer, they sound way softer. It's a little weird. Low frequencies work the same way. So when we do sounds like this and we bring them up like this, we are also, and you see I actually have filter moves sometimes to compensate for this, but it feels like the spectrum is being filled in, like a lot more shows up near the end. And this stuff is, has a lot of emphasis towards the bright end, so it sounds very bright right before we hit it, which means that if I hit it with something with a lot of low frequencies that are drop, we will increase the impact of that drop. Now, this sounds like a pretty unique riser because I'm blending so many different sounds together. I've really gone, and you see I have filter movements and stuff to help sculpt this frequency spectrum as I'm going. And whenever we make moves like this, we are changing the envelope of the sound, the ADSR envelope, as well as changing the spectrum. I just want you to be really aware of that when you do stuff like this, because you can really take it to your advantage. But I've gone through and I'm going through a lot of my older tracks now and trying to fix things that are very resonant when they swing down. So for example, whenever I bring up, if I were to bring the volume up on this and not have appropriate cuts, in these locations, which is why there are some filter moves here, it would sound very bright and it'd be like, ah, like that kind of a deal. It's not always true. Sometimes it works out quite nicely, but a lot of the times you'll want to fix that. 
There's a couple of ways we're going to fix it. Now, I also want to point out one other thing before I forget about it. So here, as we are increasing in volume, these guys are pretty bright. But if you cast your mind into the critical listening series where we talked about the Doppler effect, we know that the Doppler effect is when something moves by us and it maintains volume, but then it changes in pitch. There's this whole pitch volume thing. If you think of like a car driving by, it goes, yeah. The car's speed, if you were in the car, it would just sound like, shh, you know, whatever. It sounds like the car moving. But because it's running, it's moving past you so fast that it actually, as the waveform approaches you, it appears to be getting longer. So it actually goes down. And then as the waveform, as it, as it leaves you, the waveform gets longer because it's getting longer. But as it approaches you, it gets shorter, giving you the appearance of pitch, and then it goes away, right? Well, here, I have something that's rising in pitch, but then I make it softer. So it actually feels like this thing is moving. And it's not a result of it. It's only a result of the fact that I have pitch moving like that and the volume just went down quite dramatically. And you can hear it. it sounds like it like released itself, almost like a, some sort of a valve releasing. And so if, we, if I play it for you, check it out. It's kind of an interesting deal. <laughs> And it sounds like it gets closer here because the pitch is rising. I have a couple sounds coming together and it gets louder. So it's like, it's basically recreating the Doppler effect, but in a really cool way. So we actually have spatial movements happening simply from this concept of the ADSR and the frequency spectrum working together. Now, sometimes they're going to create those resonant passes that I talked about, where you have something that you may not want popping up in your sound. To solve things like this, I don't have an example in this particular track, but we can look at some options. So some options are you just create a permanent cut in your signal. So I believe this is one. Oh, this is a filter move. There's It's a, a high pass filter. I have to be careful because those high pass, low cut things are so darn confusing sometimes. You might call it the wrong thing. And here I have an actual filter and I've got some Q going on here. So that could be an issue. But I've already gone through and sort of fixed a lot of these. Anyways, let me just show you. So we'll go to this sound, right? It's on 26. Let's say that as this sound moves through a particular part of the spectrum, just through its volume envelope, or maybe I have a filter moving, it creates a resonant frequency that is undesirable. I could put an EQ cut there and then automate the EQ on and off so that why it comes up, there's a cut at that problem frequency, and then I could smoothly automate the EQ's changes out or maybe even EQ the band back. That way... It, it's pleasant the whole time around. It's, you know, there's no part that's like, ah! But there are other times there's a better solution to something like this. It's a little more automated. So I guess I wouldn't call it better, just a different, little more straightforward solution. And it's, I've gotten results that I like a lot from it. So this is TDR Nova. It's a free dynamic equalizer plugin. It's covered in my free plugins playlist. If you want to go find a place, you can grab it. And here, I use it all the time. I have some other ones, but I'm very comfortable with this one. I, I use it a lot. So... What you could do is you could turn on a threshold and you say, when sound exceeds this threshold, these frequencies turn them down by a set amount. We're going to be looking at dynamic equalizers a lot more later, but I use this thing all the time to massage out lines like that. And I'll automate this one on and off occasionally as well. So it'll be sort of like... I'll be doing both, but it's just a, it just offers a lot more smoothness and controlling the volume in the spectrum at the same time. Really cool. You can get um, you can get multiband compressors to do the same thing, but dynamic equalizers are are a lot more straightforward. They're pretty much the same process. You're splitting it up into bands, but the way the bands interact and it's just way more visual, a lot friendlier to work with. So we'll look at those later on. But that's how I deal with those right now. So that's just something I wanted to bring your attention to is when we make moves like this. There are positional changes that are happening with the sound as we perceive it. And so you can't just change the volume of something and be like, oh, I just changed the volume. That was it. Like there's a lot more going on than what you just said. For example, when you get into sound design and stuff, I create these bass lines and these things, if we listen here, I like, whoa, I'm changing the spectrum and it's also shaping the envelope of the sound. So it creates like if you want something that's really transient and bright and like bang, like right there in your face, you're going to want it to sound bright. If you want it to sound farther away, you'll roll off some of the highs and you can change that with the sound over time. I call that flux. I think it's a great name for it. It means continuous change. And so we're going to be looking about that in a later video. But if you have any questions about this, let me know. It's kind of a big overarching concept that you just need to be aware of as you make moves. Like, oh, this is kind of an interesting thing that's happening here. 
Uh, subscribe. I do do private lessons if you are interested. Support me on Patreon if you would like to. And have a blessed day.